Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are uh, starting off with our Twitch live stream from last week, which was uh, kind of a bust, to be real honest. Uh, I thought I could get a bunch of stuff done before the live stream started, and it turned out to not come together. So uh, I spent most of the live stream uh, playing with batteries and uh, arrow breaking. Uh, you remember this is our food missiles thing that was uh, originally intended to be a resupply for the uh, Mars Lab drop base, which is um, not gone very well at all. So its new repurposed engine is to, or mission, I should say, is uh, not to deliver uh, food, water, and oxygen to the crew on the surface, but hopefully deliver one of these many Asterisk 2 engines that we have uh, sitting here. Now, um, due to some copy pasta errors uh, in the VAB that was not caught until much, much later. Uh, only one of these food missiles actually has a usable battery. The rest of them just have the electric charge that's inside the avionics core, which uh, if you're familiar with the able avionics core is not very much. Um, a couple of minutes runtime at best. On top of all of that, all of these cores and their complete lack of a battery have uh, created kind of a drain problem on the batteries themselves. Uh, unless these solar panels are angled exactly right, uh, they the batteries just won't charge. Uh, the good news is, is that uh, many of these pods have actually no fuel in them because, again, the copy-paste error in the VAB did not copy over fuel, just like it did not copy over the electric charge. Um, I made an edit after launch to remove about uh, eight or so of the resupply pods because none of them had fuel in it. And uh, while trying to keep tonnage uh, as close to possible, as close as possible, fueled up uh, many of them, but not all. So our very first move here was actually to uh, decouple from the docking ports uh, some of these computer, uh, these ABLE uh, avionics cores, and just uh, get rid of them so that we can mitigate our battery draw uh, for the rest of the spacecraft. Um, Hopefully so we can have control and contact. With four of our crew down on the surface now, we no longer have the benefit of uh, local control from Harmonia Station, so we are back to having to deal with signal delay times, which currently, based on the position of Mars and the Earth, is almost 10 whole minutes, which uh, is making mission planning uh, lots and lots and lots of fun. I won't be deterred that easy. Uh, like I said before, we've jettisoned uh, four of our uh, avionics cores. Um, that kind of evens out the load, lowers our battery draw by a significant amount. And now we're actually uh, showing a positive charge. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and get rid of two more of these things. Um, the faster we can charge up these batteries, really, the better we're going to do. Because as we lower our orbit around Mars, of course, we will spend uh, more time in Mars's shadow, which gives uh, these two solar panels uh, less time to recharge two of these batteries. So uh, the more we can lighten this load, the better. <laughs> there go two more of our uh, useless avionics missiles and possibly some dud parachutes, and uh, again, now we're showing a much more positive charge rate. Um, we're trying to maintain our big battery up here as full as we can, because I think uh, that particular food missile is probably going to be our best bet as far as uh, bringing one of these Asterisk 2 engines uh, down to our surface crew. Um, we never actually bothered to name the base. But, uh, you know, problems with that would be now those cores are coming back to fly past us. And we're getting overheat warnings. Uh, these are, of course, our ablative struts, the uh, things that will catch fire and melt at a uh, much lower temperature than anything else. Uh, you see, there's not even enough wind shear to tear off these uh, fragile solar panels or rip off one of our comms. But uh, struts, totally combustible. Uh, I think they probably have some thermite in there. I mean, they must have a debt cord or something to separate them upon staging. So I guess it shouldn't really be a shock that they uh, explode <laughs> rather readily. And uh, we're just drifting through the upper layers of Mars' atmosphere here, trying to uh, lower down that apoapsis. as well. Well clear by the time I actually got the sentence out. But uh, a little bit of time in Mars shadow leaves us uh, without a connection because the batteries basically die. And uh, so we'll get up here to our apoapsis and uh, make some 
small corrections, hopefully, uh, we're going to toggle our air brakes open in hopes that we can maybe gain a little bit more um, slow downy power through the atmosphere. So uh, we'll just pump the brakes a little bit uh, to adjust our orbit, uh, bringing our periapsis down to about 61 or so kilometers. And we are running uh, perilously low on fuel for our, uh, what was our capture stage, I guess would be the best way to describe it. Uh, although, uh, depending on how much of a beating this engine has taken, we may decide to kind of repurpose things. A little bit but uh, now on our second pass dropping our apoapsis to uh, well below 10 million meters uh, a little bit of spinning for no apparent reason whatsoever but uh, our batteries are topped off and charged that's a pretty good sign uh, I should think anyway but uh, we cleared that pass and uh, we're just taking a quick check on how quickly those batteries drop uh, alarmingly alarmingly quick that uh, not having the individual long-term batteries on each of these cores is kind of a problem. Uh, at our apoapsis, we'll make a small correction to raise our periapsis from 60 kilometers up to 64 kilometers, just to make sure that we don't dive uh, too deeply into the atmosphere and accidentally deorbit this thing in a rather unfortunate position. Uh, that would go changing the landscape up quite a bit. But uh, about twice a day, we should get a nice pass over our uh, Mars surface base, which gives us basically two opportunities a day to uh, perform a bombing run uh, if the positioning of the spacecraft in its orbit works out. Uh, not that it will, but I, I like to look at the hopeful side of things. And uh, again, making our nice low pass, which are passing through our periapsis, or at least we did when I started the sentence, and we actually have connection uh, around the planet. That's... That's pretty cool. We could have comms direct with Earth. I think we have the angle for that. Not that it matters. Um, but that does go a bit into explaining why our signal delay is uh, 500 some odd seconds. Yeah, jaunting around again to our apoapsis, we'll make another small thruster maneuver to raise our periapsis back up to 65 kilometers. Um, not that we're seeing a linear change in our uh orbital track or anything, but uh, consistency does help uh, predict these things a, a little bit better. We can watch the numbers and watch the change each time and kind of develop uh, how much of an exponential curve we are riding on instead of just kind of winging it, which is honestly what I normally do. So uh, this time I did not forget to set the maneuver node at our periapsis so that we can judge about how much delta V we lost or will lose due to uh, aero forces uh, this run versus uh, previous runs where uh, we were seeing, you know, like 120 and then 150. And so uh, I think maybe this was the one where we saw 150-ish, could be. And uh, then we'll take a measurement of what it would take to get us to, into a uh, low, well, an acceptable orbit. These drop pods were tested from a 200 by 200 kilometer orbit uh, with... I don't know, about a 50% success rate, give or take. I did actually test some of them on a live stream a very, very long time ago, but yeah, I, I, I don't remember if that was one that worked or if those were all failures. I'm pretty sure I got one to land, at least one. I wouldn't have pressed forward with this if I didn't land at least one of these dumb things at some point, somehow. So we will press through with uh, yet another arrow breaking pass, taking us down to about a 64 kilometer periapsis while we just kind of uh, shift and jiggle in the wind. Uh, that is um, taking our apoapsis down uh, a lot faster than uh, our last pass, obviously. The uh, gains from this are exponential, so it, uh, it's just a matter of figuring out what is too low. But we're already down uh, below the 2 million meter mark and uh, on our way back up, uh, already up to about 90 kilometers or so and showing good charge on our batteries, uh, thankfully. That's at least something positive coming from this. Um, so as we exit the atmosphere, we will uh, come up to our apoapsis and then uh, get ourselves angled in and uh, use our RCS thrusters to bring our periapsis uh, up to a safe parking orbit. And uh, something here is very, very off balance. I think I actually um, 
forgot to drain something or uh, there's some fuel sitting in a off-center tank where it doesn't quite need to be of such. Anyway, we're going to adjust this into a parking orbit and then we're going to try to deorbit uh, one of our uh, resupply pods. It's mission now, of course, to deliver the engine and who really cares about the uh, food, water, and oxygen. But we'll uh, warp a little past uh, where we're supposed to be. We'll get ourselves angled in uh, make sure our batteries can be recharged. We've been uh, off putting electric charge into our, one of our main batteries, or really the only main battery, the only one that got copied over. But uh, we're going to just do a little bit of a test run. Um, this is not the ideal altitude at which to test this, but uh, we need to know how long these batteries are gonna last and what it's gonna take to get all this stuff done. So we will uh, charge up uh, one of our Able Avionics cores uh, as full as we can, and then uh, fuel up the tiny tank there at the bottom, which is the only one of all of these fuel tanks that are not uh, completely fueled, and then uh, jettison this away. Now, we will, yeah, I guess the arm command didn't go through, or we ejected before the arm command could go through. So, you know, there's that. And we'll set our target, and we'll see if uh, Mech Jeb can uh, land at a target. Now, it uh, appears to have done absolutely nothing uh, while we're just kind of sitting here bleeding electric charge it uh, eventually depletes less than a quarter of an orbit later so we at least have a time frame on how fast that battery will run down now mech jeb doesn't really care about batteries uh, it also doesn't really care about angling this uh, thing into its uh, node it'll fire the thrusters and I know these thrusters will reorient I know they will because I have done it. <laughs> I have seen it in action. Uh, they will actually reorient the craft. Mechjeb has just uh, chosen not to do that. Uh, it'll bounce around a little bit, uh, picking the auto land or, you know, land anywhere. Uh, it has the same effect. It just uh, kind of wiggles the thrusters around, not really producing uh, any torque, even though I know for a fact these things can be angled. Uh, I guess we'll get a, a demonstration on that later. But um, yeah, Mechjeb, landing guidance, completely useless in this regard. Now I'd like to blame it, uh, we could blame it on the battery, although Mechjeb doesn't really seem to care about electric charge or any of our limiting factors like uh, signal delay <laughs> or uh, any of these things. It just uh, wants to fire these thrusters around to absolutely no avail whatsoever, uh, leaving this thing drifting aimlessly in space, which was, uh, I guess, the t not the test we were trying to run, but it is uh, very interesting to know uh, exactly how useless MechJeb's landing guidance is. Anyway, so uh, a few days later, I came back to this. We are now post live stream edition uh, at this point, and uh, I was going to try to land the center uh, resupply pod, the only one that has a battery on it. So to even out our load, we're just going to jettison the one opposite our first test vehicle, uh, just to make sure that we can have a balanced payload here. Now, the very first step is to make a few more arrow braking passes at a much higher altitude. Uh, all of these, like I'm sure I mentioned before, were tested at a 200 by 200 kilometer orbit. So I'd like to get a lot closer to that if I could. So we'll drop our periapsis down to about uh, 75 kilometers and uh, start recharging our batteries uh, again. Now, uh, this is our main battery that we've just locked open at the uh, right hand side of your screen. It holds you know, 28,942 uh, electric charge, which is well more than enough to uh, make a few orbital passes and uh, hopefully come out with a successful landing. You know, here's hoping that's what it should have been. And all of these pods should have a similar battery. But uh, thanks to the way copy paste works in the VAB, they do not. So the center resupply pod is our best solo effort to uh, get one of these pods on target and on the ground successfully. So uh, every time we're in a daylight pass, we're just going to go ahead and uh, let the able cores charge up. 
dump all of that charge into that uh, procedural uh, battery atop our center resupply pod and uh, lock it so that it can't deplete. Yes, we'll be without uh, controls or anything for quite a few passes, but not that that really matters. Uh, we'll also go ahead and jettison our four life support tanks that we honestly don't need for anything. There's two more we can get rid of. I don't know why I missed those two, but we'll uh, jettison one of those in short order. I think I do notice that we still have one at some point here, and we'll get rid of it. But uh, my main focus right now was just uh, getting as much electric charge into that battery as I could. Uh, now on our second pass through the atmosphere at about a 74 kilometer uh, periapsis uh, should bring us well down close enough to, uh, I don't know, we're, we're going to make a few more passes. I got to be, to be real out, really honest, because <laughs> uh, I would like to get as close to that 200 by 200 kilometer target orbit as possible. As, uh, after reviewing some footage and then uh, reviewing changes made to these resupply pods uh, post testing, uh, that is our best chance, really, a, a nice lower orbit. There's our last uh, life support tank drifting off. I'm sure that won't come back to bite us or take a solar panel with it on its way out the door later. But uh, for now, I'll just leave you in suspense on whether or not that's actually a thing. And uh, of course, we would get rotated around to where one solar panel is completely ineffective and blocked by the spacecraft, while our primary goal right now is to recharge batteries. But uh, thanks to some uh, rotational inertia as we <laughs> come in through here to the atmosphere uh, both those panels will get kicked around into the sun so that uh, brief period there where we weren't charging the batteries fast enough to actually make a difference will get resolved by uh, Mars's atmosphere very thankfully we would hate to have to put a full stop to this mission because we got uh, pivoted around and couldn't angle ourselves back into the sun anymore so uh, this pass will take us as low as 69 kilometers uh, at the periapsis. Of course, we are, well, that would be next pass. We're already on our way back up with our apoapsis coming down to right about 250-some-odd kilometers. Uh, I'm narrating this a little too soon because it's already dropped to 240, which is absolutely perfect as far as uh, jettisoning these things. Uh, hopefully to their prospective landing site. So on our next pass on the way up, we'll get to our apoapsis and uh, realize that we don't have any electric charge nor a connection, so we cannot make a correction here because it is not in daylight. And we cannot unlock a battery without a signal or battery, which uh, I absolutely knew about because we had a crew get stranded in low Earth orbit that way and we had to emergency ship them a battery. <laughs> so that they could unlock their battery and complete their mission. So uh, as we're coming around very close to the atmosphere, down to about 200 kilometers now, uh, it's uh, all thrusters on deck to raise that periapsis, periapsis up above the atmosphere. We'll get it to about 129 kilometers, which is uh, a parking orbit, believe it or not. And then it's just uh, take a couple of quick passes, let our target uh, work its way underneath our orbital path and then take a few last minute uh, ditch charges into our battery. We've got about 6,900 units of electric charge uh, in that primary battery. We'll take the time to arm our chutes first before jettisoning the uh, resupply pod. Uh, I guess we're calling them a food missile now isn't uh, ideal because, well, we're going to dump all the food out of it. And there's stage separation, and look at how easily this thing can angle itself around to face into a node. Take notes, Mech Jeb. So uh, we're going to try to set this approach up much like our original approach for the uh, landing of the Mars base itself was. It's about a 52.8 meter per second um, thruster burn uh, to put us on course. We'll make some adjustments here to... Uh, bring us more in line with the station itself and jettison all the food and water. We'll leave a little oxygen in there, but that uh, that disparity in weight absolutely throws off my uh, calculations for uh, what a successful run on one of these things will be. Anyway, here is our deorbit burn and plane change to swing us over the target. Uh, it looks good enough to be within a few kilometers, but uh, I will turn you over to Old Me for live coverage. 
All right, our course is dialed in. Uh, we are about to hit Atmo, so... Um, oh, God, I hope this works. Uh, our first attempt at a very targeted landing here on Mars with a uh, very empty food missile. Of course, it's cargo now, the engine, and uh, not the life support supplies. So away we go. Please, please, please work somewhat well. All right, uh, drogues are out. They are arresting a lot of our speed. Where are we exactly? Let's hit backspace and toggle over our target. We're way the hell over here. Are you seriously? We hit Atmo. Oh, yeah, we're coming in at a much lower arc. Yeah, watch that periapsis drop. We're going to end up over here. A quarter a lap around the planet, and our target is uh, south of us. At best, we're looking at a couple hundred kilometers uh, downrange. At best. I don't think we're going to get at best. And I think we're also going to let those chutes just uh, run their course instead of... Normally, we would fire our engines right about now to uh, do something about it. But we're also coming in a lot lighter than normal, and with air brakes... How much battery we have left? Uh, 7,000 at a dot one five drain. So we should have enough battery to hit dirt. It's just, uh, where is this dirt going to be? <laughs> All right, well, let's, uh, let's ride it on through and see what happens. Uh, SAS is still on, but the thrusters don't really seem to care about where they're pointing. Let's see if we can't just... Angle straight down the vector here. Okay, periapsis uh, is decreasing, but not as rapidly as I thought. Maybe we'll actually get some cross range out of this. Although, yeah, like literally a third of Mars, I don't think that's going to happen. We'd need wings for this. Let's just let it ride and hope that maybe, maybe, maybe we can get some cross range. Oh, there's full deploy. That's going to put a damper on things. 118, really? Who the hell set that up? Get rid of landing guidance. We're not going to use you. Maybe we'll just leave that uh, kind of nose-uppy thing going on. Maybe we can generate some lift off of this. Nine minutes signal delay, so I don't think uh, turning off the air brakes is going to actually do much of anything at all. Hold on. If we could deflect south, so maybe we should move our nose north. Honestly, I'm just not going to do anything right now. Uh, I don't think body lift is really going to be a thing, not with all these parachutes. We're just going to use that engine to not smash into the pavement. Uh, Mars, you're so bright. Why did you get so bright? Uh, why are the thrusters firing? Let's kill the tanks. That one empty? Why is that one not empty? Let's empty it. In, in. There we go. Yeah, we'll just let it relax. Do your thing. Everything will be cool. Everything will be cool. There's our deorbit camera change. Yeah. Under zero thrust, we'd hit here, and that's going to keep fading back to about here before we even turn on the engine. Damn it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're already way out of driving range. Crap. Well, at least we can do is prove that this might work. Or it might have worked.
All right. The uh, balutes have snapped. No big deal. I mean, really, it... It does not matter even in the slightest if this thing lands successfully. Um, the entire reason we're still here is just... Well, there isn't a reason while we're still here. Let's just be fair. We're just going to try to set this thing down. So, uh, actual altitude 60 kilometers. Uh, current speed uh, 2.93 kilometers per second. And uh, accelerating... However, very slowly. I have no idea when our next deployment is. I'm pretty sure it's not until much, much lower in the atmosphere. Uh, let's see. We got 2.18 at 1.65, four minutes run time. So at about, I'm assuming it's going to be about 30 kilometers or so. At our current rate of descent of 176, 178 meters per second and accelerating. Uh, I should probably fire the engines in less than a minute, so let's time warp way past that point. And, um, yeah, we're going to light them up at about 45. Because that's what my post-it note says that is nearly a year old at this point. Hellage, 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 ignition. There's a solid light. Oh, can't tell our computer core to hold literally anything. That's, that's fine. If you could please stay pointed the direction I would like you to be in, that'd be great. I guess we'll pump fuel aft. Try to maintain some stability here. That tank is supposed to be locked for the first se uh, segment of descent. Current altitude 33 kilometers. I wonder when our next deployment is. We're still going real, real fast, though. <laughs> In. Let's just keep that running. Oh, you're not gonna, not gonna maintain the fuel flow. That's fine. Okay then. Yeah, 25 kilometers. Still no deployments. Red across the board on all shoots. That's good. Probably botched this landing, too. 2100. Let's see if we can't buy some altitude. I doubt it, but we'll give it a try. Should have lit those engines up uh, quite a bit sooner. 20 kilometers. Still moving at 2 kilometers per second. All shoots red right across the board. Uh, yeah, should have lit those up quite a bit sooner. Ten kilometers. Shoots in caution. Seven kilometers, 1,300 meters per second. When are these chutes going to fire? Five. Oh, come on. 1,200 meters per second. Fire. Where are the chutes? Three kilometers. Really? Two. One kilometer. Chutes. Oh, that is a terrible design decision. Oh, well. Where did we wreck? Over here, somewhere, I'm assuming. Way out of range for our vessel. Well, this does not bode well for literally anyone. The chutes are configured like crap. The batteries won't last through the night. I don't know if we're going to be able to get our Mars crew an engine or not. Vessel is destroyed. Cannot autosave. Awesome. 
All right, well, that's going to do it for this one, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.